I'm fortunate enough to be able to tattoo really cool people. Some of them just happen to be rock stars and athletes and people that do really cool stuff. I want to share more than just the tattoo. I want to share the story. Maddie Mullins is the singer for Memphis Mayfire. They are one of the biggest heavy metal bands in the scene today. I knew Maddie would be a really great candidate for Backstage Inc. because he's doing things that I really admire. Maddie's a pretty busy dude. He's working on a lot of projects. He's juggling a full-time successful rock and roll band that travels the world. They put out records pretty consistently every two years. He put out a solo record, released that, did videos. He's doing photo shoots and press releases and press tours, all while trying to be a good husband to his wife at home. So Maddie's manager, Jerry, was nice enough to pick him up from the airport and bring him over to the shop. And uh, we had discussed his ideas for his tattoo ahead of time. Maddie asked me to design something for his neck. He wanted to depict the story from the Bible that talks about the woman at the well. I was really excited about this piece in particular because not only was it on a neck, but he wanted me to create it 100% custom. There's nothing other than just pencil to paper, and that's something I've always really enjoyed doing in my tattoo work. I wanted to sit Maddie down for a little while, have him lay back, kind of relax and calm down for the beginning of the tattoo, and then work my way into the more intense parts of the tattoo. How did you end up joining Memphis? When uh, their original singer left, they started doing vocal auditions over MySpace. Yeah, and uh, I those days. they'd gone through a ton, like over a hundred auditions, and didn't find who they wanted. And so, wow, um, they found me, and I tried out. Yeah, and the rest was history, man. You know, it's funny. I watched your last episode of this, and you you said something about how you like band names that have meaning, and uh, ours does not. The band was called O oh Captain, My Captain. They found out right as they were about to sign their first record deal that another band had that name. I was gonna say, I think I've heard that, yeah. So everybody put their ideas into a pot and kind of chose one word from everybody's idea and it became Memphis Mayfire. That's cool. And was that before you were in it? They did that? Mm-hmm. Cool. Kellen's actually the only original member from back when the band started. Did you start singing young? Really young. Yeah? Yeah, one of those pictures I sent him was the first show I ever played. I was like eight years old. Sick. <laughs> what kind of music were you playing back then? Grunge. Really? Yeah, I was singing actually with my brother's dance. Oh, cool, man. Do you think getting tattoos was kind of influenced by the music you were listening to, the stuff you were into at, around that age, or was it completely different? When I was 16, I started a band with uh, some some guys from my hometown that, that I went to church with that were <clears throat> quite a bit older than me and they came uh, they came from a band called Buddy Ruckus uh, which was a huge influence of mine growing up so I think you know by the time I was you know 17 I decided that that was kind of the path that I was going to take yep yep that's where I was <clears throat> too man totally how does the writing usually work with you guys is it like somebody on an acoustic or you guys just riff put songs together? No, Kellen actually um, writes everything instrumental. Uh, wow. Guitars, drums, and bass. Wow. And then when Jake goes into track drums, he'll change anything that he wants to be changed. Um, and then I've always written all of our vocals. Cool. Yeah, but I never start writing until instrumentals are done. Um, so you let the music kind of help you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Lyrical content, like I'll, I'll write throughout the year, but when it comes to actually writing vocals, I, uh, I wait until the instrumental is done and I can really get a vibe for how the song makes me feel.
was there a moment, a single moment, where you're like, like, wow, Memphis Mayfire got there. We did it. We're here. Or do you feel like that's not even the case yet? I feel like I've had a bunch of those moments. It, you know, you kind of, you have those moments, and then you reach a new level, and you're like, oh, I guess I didn't have that moment until now, but now I'm definitely having that moment. <laughs> when we put out Unconditional, it debuted at number four on the top 200. Dang, dude. And um, Congrats. for Metalcore, that's unheard of, and we yep. just... You know, we, we had known that at that moment that, you know, like, I think that the, the band had, had really just gotten its start. You know, like, we, we really just started doing what we're, what we're about to do. Do you ever have to, like, pinch yourself and just think, man, how did, how did I end up here? How did I get here? Yeah, totally, man. It's really just being thankful for what we have and staying humble. That's what it's all about. I've been looking at it every 30 or 40 minutes. It looks awesome, man. I can't even imagine how cool it's going to be when it's done. And... Um, you know, if I'm going to tattoo my neck, I want it to be perfect. And when I think about London's tattoos, I think about perfection. I want to talk about Unconditional Reissue. Yeah, dude. So we're re-releasing Unconditional this summer. And uh, it's got two brand new songs and two acoustic versions of other songs from the record. Awesome. Um, and the entire album is remixed, remastered. The actual process of tracking Unconditional got pretty rushed at times, and so we had it all remixed, and cool. everything stands out the way they wanted it to now, and uh, vocals will, are still nice and loud, so I'm happy. Nice. So there's those two new songs that are on the on the reissue? Mm-hmm. Are those new songs, or are those like B-sides from prior? They're brand new songs. Any surprises? Or are we looking at good old Memphis Mayfire? Sounds like Memphis Mayfire, and it's, uh, cool. in my opinion, a couple of the best songs we've ever written. These two songs were songs that we were going to put on the next record, and when we decided to do the deluxe reissue, uh, we wanted to add two new songs, and we thought, well, why not just take, you know, two songs that are ready for the next record and cool. kind of give people an introduction to what the next record's going to sound like. So count your money, or kill my friends. Well, sir, How we feeling tonight? You guys yeah, excited to get back on Warped Tour? Yeah, dude, Warped is gonna be dope. It's uh, this is our third time doing it. It'll be our second time playing main stage and. Had a boy. When was the last time you guys were out on Warped? 2013, I believe. Nice. Yep, 2013. You guys um, planning on doing mostly new stuff? We're going to be playing a bunch of songs we have music videos for, kind of the heavy hitters, but then also we're for sure incorporating the two brand new songs that are on the re-release. So I remember being bummed I missed it. I remember you guys toured with Yellow Card last year, right? Yeah, we did a co-headliner with them. Quite a quite a genre change yeah for dude a co-headliner i mean people disagreed with it but i don't care like i love those dudes we grew up listening to yellow card and Heck yeah and um i'm not i'm not in this line of work to just always do what makes sense i don't want to just do metalcore tours for the rest of my life so dude we had the opportunity to do a co-headliner with them and it was just a game changer for us dude we got to play in front of a bunch of college kids that probably would never have seen us live otherwise and yeah they got to play in front of a bunch of metalcore kids that you know at, you know as iconic as yellow card was probably had never heard of them yeah and uh, but for whatever reason dude like you know they would always finish off with ocean avenue and it was just insane every night listen I gotta tell you I love what I do, but it's not worth it for me to leave my family and get up here every night if I don't leave you with something that matters. So when you leave this venue tonight, if you haven't learned anything else, I want you to learn this. You are valuable. You are loved. You are important. Whether you see it now, whether you believe it or not, I promise you there's someone out there that thinks you're so, so very special. So hold on, no matter what it is that's got you down, hold on. I wrote this song about it. We call this one Legacy. A lot of frontmen will say, you know, like, I'm not here to be a role model. I don't want to be a role model. Um, you know, I just want to be a rock star. And um, 
the truth is we don't make that choice you know we write music and people pay attention to what we do and so whether you like it or not you're a role model whether you want to say you are or not you are and you have to choose whether you want to give people truth or give people garbage and um, dude I'm very aware of how short my time is and uh, I can't take this platform and do, use it for anything else Well, we had an incredible time today at Vatican Studios with London Reese and I uh, got an amazing neck piece. I'm so excited about it. Can't wait to post it and share it with the world. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you at Warp Tour. What a rad day it's been getting to know such a cool and humble guy. This is one hardworking dude who really cares about his craft. If you really want to be inspired, check Matty out. Listen to his band, check out his solo projects and pay attention. He's changing the world.